Good morning, class. So we're continuing today our discussion of Chapter 3, which is the analysis of one quantitative variable. So right now we're looking at descriptive statistics. Specifically today we're looking at a different type of graphical display for one quantitative variable. So one graphical display that we already looked at was a box plot. Another one that we're going to look at today is a histogram. So here is an example of a histogram. A histogram is very similar to a bar graph, which we've already looked at in Chapter 2, except for it's basically a bar graph for quantitative data. So a histogram, you'll notice, has a vertical axis that's looking at the frequency or number of people that are in each group or trees or plants, whatever it is you're studying. And then the horizontal axis is going to give you the quantitative variable that you're interested in. So for a bar graph, you'll notice the difference simply at the horizontal axis. So a bar graph, the horizontal axis would give you a different category. So maybe eye color. Here, your horizontal axis would be your quantitative variable. So because of that, because the horizontal axis on a histogram is going to be essentially a number line, that's why the bars would touch. And on a bar graph, because it's going to be a different category, so eye color like brown, green, the bars wouldn't touch because it doesn't make as much sense for green eyes to touch blue eyes. Whereas here, it makes sense for four hours to sleep to butt right up to five hours of sleep, for example. So when we looked at section 3.2, we were looking at different ways to describe a distribution, and we talked about four areas that are necessary for describing a distribution. So one area is the center, a second is variability or how much spread there is, a third area is going to be the shape, and the fourth area is outliers. So let's look at that for this histogram. So for this histogram, it appears that the center is at about seven hours of sleep. So one thing to recognize, if your data is symmetric, the center of the horizontal axis is going to also be the center of your data set. So if it's asymmetric, you wouldn't have the center of the horizontal axis most likely represent the center of the actual data set. And we'll look at that in just a second. So the next thing we have is variability or spread. So remember from um, a few lectures ago, the variability or spread could be range. So here it appears that our data is ranging from about three hours of sleep tonight a night to about 10 or 11 hours of sleep a night. So then the next one we have is shape. So this particular histogram can be described in three different ways. First, you can describe it as being symmetric because when you look at it, you can cut it down the center and there's approximately the same amount of observations on the left-hand side as there is on the right-hand side. So it's symmetric. A second description would be unimodal, meaning that it just peaks one time and then falls. So it rises and falls only one time. So it's symmetric because you can split it down the middle. It's uh, unimodal because there's only one prominent peak. And we also could describe it as being bell-shaped because when you draw a line around it, it appears to have that nice bell <coughs> shape. So in terms of outliers, which remember is the atypically large or atypically small value, there wouldn't appear to be any for this particular graph because all of the data seems to be together and an outlier has to stray far away from the bulk of the data. So next we have graphs that you would not have symmetry, which means that the graph itself's center is not going to be the center of the horizontal axis. So for example, up here you can see that the data ranges from 5 to 15. 10 is not the center of that data set. So because this graph is skewed, your center is more likely going to be around 13 or 14. So for this particular graph, if I were to draw a curve around it, I can see that that curve has a drag or tail on the left-hand side. So remember that we would call that left skewed because the drag or skewness is happening on the right-hand side. So similarly down here, because, whoops, a little off, but you get the idea. This is going to be called right skewed because the tail or drag of the distribution is happening on the right hand side. So for a histogram, that y axis is going to be the same as a bar graph. So it's frequency or number of people in each group. But remember for a histogram, it's different than the bar graph because here, 
it's showing you a number line because the horizontal axis is representing one quantitative variable instead of on a bar graph, which is representing a categorical variable. So one thing that I want you to recognize about histograms is that in terms of the way that we describe distributions, a histogram is the best or the easiest for being able to see shape. And you can see why. We have a nice left skew, and you can see that picture develop, whereas with a box plot, it's harder. It's not as intuitive to actually see shape.